Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we are going to launch a station to Minmus. Currently we have a Minmus cycler in orbit around Minmus and we've sort of been treating it like a station even though it only has one Kerbal on board but it does have recycling facilities and stuff like that. But I just uh, picked up a contract which says, hold on, I've got a bunch of contracts here. Build a new orbital station around Minmus. Uh, so it has to be brand new. It has to have an antenna. So we have uh, antenna here and also you can barely see them but we've got the uh, these little uh, commutatron skis as well just in case. Um, docking port. Obviously we have a series of docking ports here and also a docking port on top. We've got a shielded docking port right at the top here and also can generate power. So I I'm doing the whole checklist here basically for you. Uh, we have solar panels and then okay it has to be a new station yeah it supports eight Kerbals well if we take a look at the crew definitely enough seats for eight here actually ten and 7500 of electric charge so in here we have um, tweak scaled ones of these because unfortunately we don't have the 2.5 meter ones yet so I cheated and tweak scale these up because I didn't want so many parts. Now we also have uh, three tanks of uh, mob propellant in there and of course the probe core. So yeah, that's all done. And then of course we wouldn't have the viewing cupola here if not for the fact that it requires one. So we do have a viewing cupola. And uh, it wanted 6,000 units of fuel on in the station. So I put this uh, these kinds of container tanks on and we've locked 6,000 units of liquid fuel so uh, we're just going to use this fuel down here and according to MechJeb the station currently has 1,954 which it will use to transfer to Minmus and get into orbit around Minmus also probably finish orbit around Kerbin as well depending on how the first two stages uh, turn out the first two stages are sort of configured like a uh, Titan rocket or a GSLV Mark III rocket in that we've got uh, well, there are a number of rockets that are like this with uh, the two engines in tandem like this and then two boosters like that. And But of course if this was like Titan or GSLV Mark III then the boosters would light on the ground and then uh, the, the main sails would only light in the air. But we're going to light all of them on the ground and just throttle down the main sails. And of course we are trying to recover the boosters. This was the cheapest arrangement. I felt so that's what we're going with. The actual station cost, if I take this off, is 145000 For the contract we got an advance of 188000 uh, But fulfilling the contract uh, gives us about 400000 Okay, uh, so that's one contract, but I've also contrived to see if I can do some other contracts with this. So we have this altimetry sensor. And that's a very expensive altimetry sensor, by the way. Uh, if we take a look here, it says 25,000. So actually, a huge chunk of the cost of the station is just that one altimetry sensor. And that's because uh, it says do a high-resolution scan of Minmus. And that's the, one, that's the instrument that does the high-resolution altimetry scan. And we need to do 85% coverage with that. We also have a lingering position satellite in synchronous orbit of Minmus and for that it needs to have a multi-spectral imaging platform uh, which is that multi-spectral imaging platform that's uh, important to check that out because there's also a uh, different multi-spectral thingamajig this one scan multi-spectral sensor I've gotten those confused before and also a solar particle collector and so we've got those two things and we have to get into this orbit which is in orbit around Mimus, so that's fine uh, for the other contract. And um, antenna and can generate power was already fulfilled. Now it says unmanned probe. I don't know how picky it's going to be by the fact that we do have, you know, seats. And we won't have any Kerbals inside, and it will be probe controlled. But does it look for whether there's actually a Kerbal on board? Or does it look for whether it has any room for Kerbals on board? So that I don't know. So we may or may not be able to fulfill that contract by having these two things and uh, getting into that orbit. But we'll get into that orbit 
and then uh, this will, ha and then the station contract will also be fulfilled. And then, if we need to, we can unlock this fuel to get into a polar orbit, uh, so that we can do the high resolution scan of Minmus. And then finally, uh, maybe we can just dock it up with the uh, Minmus cycler and make a huge station out of it instead of having everything be loose. Uh, you might note the colonization modules we have here. We have a Pioneer Logistics module, uh, the colonization module here, and the agricultural module here. The benefit to docking with the existing Minmus Cycler is the Minmus Cycler has the Recycler uh, portion. Uh, I think it has uh, Nomomatic actually. So that's nice. I need to figure out well, this one inputs mulch and output supplies. Yeah, so we need to recycle more mulch. We've got too much of that. Um, we've got a supply tank here. I, I think I would like to add some fer more fertilizer. would probably help out. But uh, right now, we'll just keep it as it is. Uh, we've got machinery there. We've got machinery here. So we've got that going. And we don't need to expand any modules. So that's not a problem. Uh, yep, so that's the idea. And now, as far as our other activities are concerned, in five days we have to do a maneuver with the Moho Scanner. I've checked our supply situation. Um, this won't show that. But our supply situation and habitation situation with the Kerbals is fine for now. And we've got 28 or so days until we have to take care of these two Duna missions. One of them is actually in orbit around Kerbin, and we want to uh, handle that in a practical way. But uh, uh, so we'll just try and get this done before that and we'll do those perhaps in the next episode but I think I'll want to focus on this we've got three contracts to fulfill with this after all okay so on that note checking that there is no Kerbal on board uh, let's take this out to the launch pad and see how it goes okay here we go SAS is on, Thrall is up everything seems alright hopefully Ignition and launch. Okay, throttling down a bit. And starting our maneuvers. I hope it's not too wobbly. I did auto strut it. Um, okay, it is too wobbly. Okay, hold on. Worry not, I'll take it from here. Oh, that's still wobbly. Hmm, auto well, I didn't auto strut everything to everything, but I thought the modicum of. Uh, there must be a loose joint somewhere. I wonder about those balloon tanks and whether they're a loose thing. Otherwise, uh, everything should be pretty solid. This is really bad for trajectory purposes. Okay, separation. Ooh, that's bad too. Ooh. Okay. Uh, can we turn now, please? Thank you. Yeah, I totally forgot about separatrons on those boosters. Hopefully that's all I forgot. Yeah, we probably won't even need uh, the Nervas. These are actually Nervas on here, by the way. Radial Nervas. Probably won't even need them to get to orbit. Okay, that's pretty much perfect. That's what we want. We wanted this to run out and deorbit. And then uh, the Nervous will finish orbit, so throttle down, set, set. Let's start them off. Occurs to me there isn't a huge amount of control on this, but at least there is some control. I didn't exactly put a reaction wheel or RCS. So, I did put mop down, but that's more for refueling things that dock, just to have some room. Most of the things I expect to have docking to this will be using nuclear engines, so that's why it's only... I mean, we were only requested to put nuclear uh, liquid fuel, and 
I think that's a good idea. So we're looking to just have uh, a lot of nuclear stuff. Yep, lots and lots of reusable nuclear things. Okay, well, let's just coast to Wapwapsis. Uh, let's get everything out. Extend all solar panels. Extend all... Oh, okay, it doesn't have an extend all for the antennae. Okay. That should be good enough, hopefully. Let's see, our boosters were recovered. A terminal velocity of 6.02, so right on the margin. And we got back uh, 18,000 for them, so that's excellent. So, does this count as... Yeah, it counts as an unmanned probe. Has a little check mark next to it. Everything else okay? Yep, uh, this contract just says put your station in orbit around Minmus. That's good. And that one will take some time, of course, with the high resolution altimetry scan. So, good times. It looks like I haven't made any uh, further obvious mistakes. I did forget to put a, some sort of KIS container on this. That would have been helpful. I thought about it, but I thought about it at the same time I was thinking about putting this container for the supplies. And I totally forgot about the KIS container. Anyway, this is good enough for an orbit. Let's transfer out to Minmus. That's closer than we need. What we need is... Come on. Um, periapsis of 307 kilometers. Inclination 34.7 degrees. Let's take a look at uh, how things are going as far as matching that. See, it's this orbit over here. Well, I mean... Okay, well, we're coming around the wrong way. We need to come around this way to get around. Otherwise, we're going to have to, like, reverse the direction of our inclination. Not that that's a difficult thing to do around Minmus. Says our Minmus encounter is in nine days once we finish this burn, so we will have to take care of that MOHO scanner first. We're not quite hitting Minmus where we wanted to because a high real component is active here, so we're actually taking it over there. But we will hit it. Perhaps this calls for a mid course adjustment, even though the whole point of this was to avoid one. Okay, that looks about right for touching that orbit, and so that's the point where we'll get into orbit and hopefully do, do all the important things. Okay, so that's in one day, so we do that first before doing the Minmus, uh, not the Minmus, Moho scanner stuff. Well, there's Kerbin and the Moon. Okay, that's what we wanted. Let's go with that. And now I need to add an alarm for the SOI change because we do have to do the other thing. So, SOI change alarm there, and instead of using Kerbal Alarm Clock to jump to the MOHO scanner, I'll just use the tracking station, and we're just doing a little maneuver to make sure it actually hits EVE, right? It's in the middle of a transfer between MOHO and EVE, and we wanted it to try and hit EVE, but the, uh, I forget what the problem was. I think there was a problem involved there. So, let's go take a look. Okay, so here we are with the MOHO scanner, which is going to at least fly by EVE. I'm not entirely sure what else it might do, but we haven't gotten much by way of EVE science anyway. Uh, I think probably our problem had been signal strength. We hadn't uh, got a good signal, but now we do. We have a 30% signal, which should be good enough to complete this. So 590.8 meter per second burn. Okay, here we go and point at the node all right we'll see an inclination change well i think it's just an inclination change actually here we go and next the power of four antennas 
Oh, it looks like we have to do another maneuver. Oops, 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 oops. Ah, uh, okay, hold on. Let's get this maneuver done right. Yeah, we have another maneuver to do after this. Um, still looks like it's aimed properly to hit Eve, but yeah, we have to do that one in another year. I mean, well, 363 days, not quite a Kerbin year. But yeah, that's pretty remarkable. Let's see. Let's see if we can get closer to Eve with that. Yeah, we barely have, have enough fuel for this flyby. But we can get a fairly close flyby. Okay, so we'll do that maneuver. Let's set that up. But that's much later on. Okay, back to Minmus Station stuff. Okay, we are about to enter Minmus Sphere of Influence here. I hope this is the right way around and everything. Now, we already have a little uh, satellite that is in the orbit we're supposed to go into. And the problem with that one was it wasn't a new satellite, I think. So that's why it didn't fulfill the contract. Okay, that, that looks about right. So, let me uh, plot a maneuver to match the target orbit, and then we'll do it. Okay, that's a pretty convincing match to my eyes for 198.2 meters per second. So that's a good deal. Let's do that. I guess we could start that uh, altimetry scan. Suboptimal. That doesn't mean it's not doable. It's just suboptimal. We need to be in a higher polar orbit to do it, though. But not right now. Okay. Well... Should I even look to see whether that's close? Well, it says it's close enough on the contract. Whoop, whoop, come on. Maintain stability for 10 seconds. Oh, why does my camera keep changing? There we go. All right, we fulfilled both contracts. We fulfilled the position satellite in synchronous orbit of Minmus and build a new orbital station around Minmus. Okay, well, that's a pretty good start to this particular station. And that's a lot of funds, so that's good, because we really need more buffer on our our account. But um, yeah, let's do that high resolution scan of Minmus. So we'll move it into a polar position, and then perhaps we'll we'll uh, move our existing. Wait, the Minmus cycler is sort of polar already, so we could just match the Minmus cycler cycler's. Uh, inclination and that should help us scan yeah okay well let me plot a series of maneuvers to allow us to do that okay so here we go uh, this will be our first burn at the node 96.8 meters per second to match inclinations closely enough and get into this sort of uh, orbit Okay, that should be good enough. It's one degree off, but we can take that. Oh, it occurs to me, we don't really want to do this, because we need to be in a pretty high orbit. Hmm, in order to do the scanning. We would have to, like, boost out the entire cycler. Yeah, let's, um, we'll, we'll stay in the same inclination as the cycler. But I think we should boost to a higher orbit for the scanning purposes. Um, we, according to it, we haven't really even gotten started with this scanning, so... Yeah. Contracts come first. Convenience later on. 
on the right side again our actual delta v on this is not what it's saying there our actual delta v is 5500 almost so thanks to the fact that it required us to carry 6000 liquid fuel so this is actually very good and the uh, station modules don't weigh that much most of the mass is probably just the fuel Actually, maybe before I boost up, I should see whether this orbit does cover, uh, I mean, because I'm thinking about optimal and not optimal in terms of Kerbin, perhaps. Let's see what it really is for Minmus. Do we actually pass into an optimal situation? No, we definitely have to boost higher. Oh, no communication. Oh, there we go. We got communication. All right, let's uh, go prograde again. And we'll boost that apple apsis higher. I wonder if we can do some science with these other things, like solar particles. Well, only for recovery. We're still in space high. Probably has been done already for all the instruments. This one has 20 actually. The high over Minmus has not been done with this multi-spectral analysis. So let's try and submit that 20. We've got science. I think the readout in the VAB said something about 700 kilometers or so. Let's go out there. Still suboptimal. I wonder if I have to go out of time warp to see whether it's optimal or not. Let's see. Still says suboptimal. For a detailed altimetry scan, a high resolution altimetry scan, I'm surprised it's supposed to be this high. doesn't seem to be working maybe it's actually it would make a lot more sense if it was supposed to be lower let's try stopping and restarting it hasn't read any progress on this either hmm maybe it needs to be very close to Minmus I don't know High resolution scan. That's what this is supposed to do. Well, let's try retrograde and bringing the periapsis closer and seeing if it ever gets optimal. I'm especially worried that it got no progress in the range of altitudes that we're currently in. Well, we're really low over it now. It's still saying suboptimal. Um, is there like something else I have to turn on with it? No, not that. I mean, definitely no data to analyze. Okay, let's uh, pop back into the VAB and see what it says about the, well, what this needs. Okay, so here we are. It says the radar sensor uses its flight path to simulate a much larger antenna. This makes it possible to detect terrain elevations at much higher resolution. The downside is that its field of view is comparatively small and it works better at higher altitudes. Okay, well, it said uh, altitude best center in 50 kilometers. Altitude max 800. Altitude min was 5 kilometers. So, I mean, in theory, it should be working, right? Should be chugging right along. I mean, maybe it's not at the best, but it should still, like, work. Let's check it again at, let's say, 750 kilometers. I don't know if this is 750 kilometers with respect to Kerbin or just any planet would be the same. 
some planet, I mean, moon or planet, uh, some of them probably you can't get to 150 kilometers around, so must be some difference, but yeah. Well, I grant you that we're not quite at the best altitude of uh, 750 kilometers, but 735 should be fine. Maybe it just wants me to like circularize at this. Let's go with that theory because I can't think of anything else. So maybe if uh, if we're completely at this orbit, that'll be the best thing. Well, okay, now we are going from 961 to 670. And scanner is still on, right? Still says suboptimal. Maybe it's just not going to tell me about the progress, even though it's going on. It seems like it's going on. I think this is the high resolution scan, actually. And it's blinking. Sort of implies it's doing something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It was ideal for a sec there. Okay, so there is an ideal height, and it does reach it. Okay, now it says too high. Well, okay. So it is like uh, 800 is too high. We'll have to come back around and that periapsis. You know, I have to take a look at my time. We've got an orbital period of five days. But uh, at periapsis, bring that apoapsis down. Otherwise, uh, we can see right now it's not even scanning. So it turns out it's, it's extremely picky about the 750 kilometer thing, but this should be all right anyway. There we go. All right, so we'll leave this here for now, and later on we are going to rendezvous it with uh, Minimus Station, but first it has to finish the scanning. Well, this is the probe. This is Duna Colony 00. It was supposed to check out everything before we actually colonized. But, uh, yeah, its huge dish is still blocking its way from uh, getting solar input from the sun. And fortunately, its solar panels are back here. And so even by the time we get to this alarm in seven days for it, where I was supposed to check up on it and see if it was all right yet, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be all right in that time. Probably it'll take like half a Duna year before it's going to uh, be oriented with respect to the sun in a way that's going to work for the solar panels. Maybe maybe a quarter of a year, maybe a half of a year, somewhere there. Anyway, so... Well, we'll take care of the other mission, which is the one that's around uh, Kerbin, and we need to make sure it can get safely to Duna uh, by adding a solar panel. Maybe what I need to do is create a space plane to get up to it to make that repair. I don't think... Uh, yeah, I think uh, something interesting like that would be nice. Anyway, on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.